Good morning, Ebenezer family and friends. We made it, yes, to another Sunday where we can worship together. We can lift up the name of the Lord. If you're excited about Jesus, can you put in the chat, Jesus, type Jesus, wherever you're sitting or standing, just say, Jesus, he is wonderful. And I just pray the Lord for allowing us to just get together today. So much is going on. We are in Revival 2023 at Ebenezer, and we have a lot of speakers that are coming in, and I'll announce those a little later. We've already been blessed by one of our uh, ministers speaking into our heart. I just want to thank you for being a living epistle. Um, we are an example in this world, this dark, dark world where there are earthquakes and there are floods and there are wars and rumors of wars. We've been talking about that in our Bible studies. Uh, God has allowed us to be here so that we can let the world know that there is still hope and his name is Jesus. Thank you for connecting with us on Monday. We have Monday Manna on our virtual connection at seven o'clock. Then Tuesdays at noonday Bible study, we're going through the book of Genesis. And Wednesday on our virtual connection at seven o'clock, we're going through the book of Luke. And then Thursday, we have an in-person Bible study where we're going through the book of 1 Corinthians. Please continue to pray for our 845 in-person, our 1045 in-person, and our 10 o'clock online. This morning in our 845 in-person service for our revival, we had Pastor Johnny Edwards gave a wonderful word of encouragement to us. Today on our 10 o'clock online, we're going to have Pastor Vince Harrison of Calvary. He has a word for us. And then in our 1045 in-person service today, we have Dr. Valerie uh, Noble uh, coming forth with a word. And then we're going to come back on Monday and Tuesday. So Monday at seven o'clock, we're going to have Pastor Jerome Lee of St. James Missionary Baptist Church. And then on Tuesday at seven o'clock in-person service, we're going to have uh, one of my friends, uh, Pastor Henry Davis of Mount Zion AME. So it's just a blessing to have all of these pastors and evangelists uh, at Ebenezer to bless our hearts. Finally, I want to thank you for your giving. Uh, we've been blessed, even in these turbulent times, ups and downs, uh, after COVID times, entering into COVID times, all kinds of viruses. God has been a wonderful provider. Any amens out there, just say hallelujah. He has been a wonderful provider. And we thank you that um, you have uh, partnered with us to be cheerful givers. Uh, I love the scripture that says he wants us to purpose in our heart, that we don't have to give out of necess necessity or uh, with a grudging attitude, but we can be cheerful. It, it, I need a quick ch typer. Can you just put cheerful in the chat? Cheerful. We can be cheerful when we give because we know how good God has been to us. So I want to thank you. Thank you. It enables us to do a lot of outreaches. We did an outreach on yesterday where the community was blessed. Uh, we we're able to reach out to feed the hungry ministry on a third Sunday where we we're actually in City Central Park and giving out food and clothing. And there are so many other things that we're able to go out and encourage the saints in the Lord and also those who are, are really challenged in their lives and may not know Christ. But by your giving and my giving, we can reach out and we can let them know that God is so, so good. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for Pastor Harrison to speak into our lives today. So I want you to be in prayer for him. Let's go in a time of worship and celebration as we're thinking about Jesus in our generation. 2023, our annual revival. You be blessed. Our scripture message this morning will come from... 1 Corinthians 15th chapter, verses 1 through 11. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also you are saved, if ye keep in memory that I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of about 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this presence, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, 
then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was in me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believe. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and understanding of his holy word. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning. No one will join me, still I will follow. No one join me, still I will follow. Yeah. No one will join me, still I will follow. Yeah. No time. No turning back. Listen to this. The world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me. No turning back. 
Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come to share your word, to give you honor, to give you glory, to bless your name. Thank you, Lord, for Ebenezer Baptist Church, Dr. Woods, First Lady Woods. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to minister to your people. And God, we pray that you would bless this audience of virtual, Lord, worshipers as they come together to celebrate your goodness. In Christ's name, amen. We're going to look at uh, Joshua, the first chapter, verses 1 through 11 today. Joshua, the first chapter, and the Bible says this in Joshua chapter 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them. The children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses from the wilderness, and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. Verse five says, and no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage for this people. You shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. First of all, I would like to give honor to God, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to the Holy Spirit, who is my constant companion, to uh, this Ebenezer Church family, to Pastor and First Lady, to the officers of this great church. I want to say thank you for the privilege of being able to facilitate this virtual revival. Now, here we are in the fall, at the beginning of the most wonderful time of the year, at least the most wonderful time of the year for me, football, festivals, food, fun, and family. And you know, all of my life, I have been going to my grandmother's or my mother's house for holiday events, for Thanksgiving, for Easter, for Christmas, for every holiday. But in the year 2020, something drastically shifted. Things changed in a mighty way. Thanksgiving dinner was now no longer at my mother's house because no one had Thanksgiving that year. It all shifted. And what we do know is that in 2021, the Thanksgiving dinner was now at my sister's house because my mama was no longer able to do the Christmas and the Thanksgiving dinner, and my grandmother had long since passed. Now, because my grandmother Ruth had been dead for no, so many years and my mom was no longer able, we had to make a shift. And what I saw occurring when that happened was that the mantle was being passed from one generation to the next. The responsibility that my grandmother had was passed to my mother and the responsibility that my mother had was being passed to my siblings. What I understand from that is each generation has a responsibility to pass to the next generation because grandma won't be here always, mama won't be here always, and eventually we won't be here. Now, last year in 2022, my father passed away. He passed away actually this weekend last year. And if I were, if I was still trying to do what my dad did or if or needing my dad to do what he did, I would be in trouble because each generation is replaced eventually. What we find in the book of Joshua is Joshua is replacing a generation that had gone before him. As a matter of fact, Joshua is kind of like the remnant of a generation that God said wouldn't make it into the promised land. Moses, the servant of God, is dead, and now Joshua is the leader. And so I would like to use for a topic today, a new generation, a new beginning, a new generation, a new beginning. What we do know from Deuteronomy, the 31st chapter, is that 
Moses had been 120 years old. He had been leading the children of Israel. God had chosen him. He was a great man, but Moses is now on the verge of crossing over, crossing over from life to death. And God tells him, I need you to pick somebody that can carry this mantle on when you are gone. And I think one of the tragedies that we deal with in the church is often there is not a generation that replaces us. You know, I have a son by the name of Christoph, and Christoph, he is a preacher, he is a singer, and he has a strong desire to do ministry. He has a strong desire to do ministry, and I'm always speaking to him, and I'm telling him, I need you to also get some learning with your burning, get some learning with your burning, but he wants to take up the mantle and do great things. And you know what? I honestly believe within my heart that my son will do greater things than I have done. Why? Because I believe that Joshua will do things that Moses didn't do. Joshua will take the people into the promised land, something that Moses was not able to do. But what we do know is that Joshua sat under Moses and learned from Moses and gleaned from Moses. So when it was his time, it would be his turn. The book of Joshua is about possessing the promise. We know that the author of this book is Joshua. And after being in bondage for 430 years and after wandering in the wilderness for 40 years and after the older generation dies out, the grandmas and the granddaddies have died out. In Deuteronomy 31, Moses is 120 years old. He's no longer able to go out or to come in. And before he dies, he tells Joshua, I need you to be strong. And before he dies, he tells them the Lord is going before them. And before he dies, he passes the mantle to Joshua. Now, this 120-year-old man realized that he wouldn't be able to do ministry forever. He realized that somebody had to come behind him. He realized that God had chosen a new generation. You know, the Bible says that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, and that we have been called out of darkness into the marvelous light. The Israelites are now camped on the east bank of the Jordan, on the very edge of the promised land. They are completing their mourning period for their great leader, Moses, and they are getting ready to possess the land. And what we do know, it's time for them to move. But sometimes people are not able to move because people don't have the right leader. The, 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 this ministry or this, this nation is now in a state of transition. And the Bible says in verse one, and after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. I don't care how great your Moses is, eventually all Moses die. All Moses died. It says, Moses, my servant, is dead. And so what we have to do is make sure that we have somebody coming behind us. Now that we arise and go over this Jordan, you and all this people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Now Joshua is probably devastated by the death of Moses, his friend, his mentor, his father figure. And who was Moses in Israel? He was a man who has gone from a stutterer to a fabulous orator. He's a he's a religious leader, a lawgiver, a prophet whom The author of the Torah is attributed the first five books of the Bible. He is the most important prophet in Israel's history. He leads the people from Egypt. He brings them from bondage. He's this great person. He received the Ten Commandments. He brought them across the Red Sea. And after 40 years of wandering in the desert, Moses is now dead. And he's dead in sight of the promised land. You know, one of the things that we are attempting to do at Calvary, we are attempting to build a sanctuary. We're attempting to build a sanctuary in the front of our facility. And one of the things that I've come to realize is that I may not get to build that building. Somebody else might have the responsibility. Maybe my young son will come behind me and build that building. You know what? There are some things that God allows in this generation. And there are some things that God allows 
for the next generation. And I'm not the kind of person that believes that the church is going to die out in our generation. You know, some people believe that God is going to move in this generation, but he's not moving in the next generation. You know what? If I can't see it right now, I prophesy it. I see it in the spirit because I believe that all of our sons and daughters will be great men and great women of God. I believe that we are somewhere in a future and our future looks much better than it does right now. What we do know is that just like my daddy died last year, Moses dies when he is 120 years old. I'm going to a funeral today for my aunt who is 105 years old. You know what? She was strong all the way till she got to the end. But no matter who you are, no matter where you are, eventually we all die. Moses is dead. Even Lazarus, when Jesus brought him back to life, he died again because everybody that's born of a woman is of a few days, according to Job, and full of trouble. Moses is dead. The only person that ever spoke to God face to face. In Deuteronomy, the 34th chapter, verse 10 through 12, we find out that he knew God face to face. He knew God face to face. And so Moses knew God face to face. And I believe this, our forefathers and our foremothers knew God face to face. But Moses and Aaron are now checking off the scene and God has somebody else to lead. Our first point that I want to make today is no matter how good we are or how much we've done for God, we sometimes disobey God. Now, why did Moses not get to enter into the promised land? Because he wasn't obedient to everything that God told him to do. And you know what I found out? Even grandma wasn't always obedient. Even granddaddy wasn't always obedient. You know what I really found out? Even I am not always obedient. And that's why I am so thankful for the grace of God. I am so thankful for the mercy of God. You know, Psalm 62 says that God is a God who is tremendous in mercy. He is a God he, the Bible says that to God belongs all power. Power belongs to God in Psalm 62, but it says also that mercy belongs to God. Now, I want you to know that God has the power to wipe you out, but God also has the power to show you tremendous mercy. And so Moses is now dead at the age of 20, and Moses has raised up a replacement. Now, the challenge for the church of this generation is to raise up the church of the next generation to raise up the church of the next generation. And the thing that I do know is that when I was growing young and in the body of Christ at the age of 18 on the campus of North Carolina a and you know, we were doing things a little different. We were singing different songs. We were trying to push the envelope, but we were the same church. And right now I see my son pushing the envelope, trying to do things different, but it's the same church. And what we need to do is pass it to the next generation. Or maybe the new church has smoke and maybe the new church has light. But I believe this, that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the thing that I love about my Savior, the thing I love about my God is that he is consistently consistent. And if he was God for grandma, and if he was God for granddaddy, and if he was God for mama, and if he was God for daddy, he will also be a God for this generation. And so what do we know about Joshua? But Joshua was the servant of Moses for 40 years. He was a wise and gifted military strategist. He was a captain of Israel's army. He was one of the two living witnesses of the Egyptian plagues and the Exodus and one of the 12 spies that went into the promised land. He was not afraid to go against popular opinion. He was a person that was commissioned by God to be Moses' successor. What we also know is that Joshua is a fighter. And if there's anything that we need in the next generation, we need some people who are radical fighters. Now watch this. Some people want to be lovers and some people want to be fighters. But what we do know is that Joshua was a fighter. He was not afraid. And I believe this, that the young generation operates from a place. God has not given us the spirit of fear. And I believe this, a fearful church can't do anything for Jesus. Somebody has to be bold. Somebody has to be radical. And what we find out is that Joshua is this radical, radical guy. He's radical for the things of God. And I believe this, that I need to be radical. 
I know this, when the people were murmuring against Moses and Aaron, Joshua stood up. And I believe this. You know, sometimes when I'm at the church and I might be a little reluctant to say something, my son who thinks he's my protector or something, sometimes he'll say something and I'll say, hold up. Because see, a lot of times Joshua's are like Peter's. They will pull out a knife in a minute and cut you. And sometimes because pastors are so loving, they won't tell people the truth. Joshua is this new leader. Now, Joshua is not going to do everything like Moses. And this new generation will not do everything like us, just like we didn't do everything like our parents. We didn't do everything like our parents. Watch this. This virtual revival is proof that we don't do everything like our parents. But God is still the God of heaven. He's still the God of glory. You know what? Joshua waited for his time and his turn. And the thing that I have to make sure my son doesn't do is push me out the way too soon or give me some cyanide and make me drink it so that he can become the pastor. But you know what? Joshua waited for his time. He waited for his turn. And I believe this when it's your season for you to be in the place that God wants you to be, no devil can stop you. No leader can stop you. No church can stop you because what God has for you, it is for you. I believe it's time for a new generation of leaders, and I believe it's time for a new generation of ideas. And sometimes I'm thinking, and I'm pretty much a cutting edge person. Sometimes I'm actually thinking, I'm thinking old. I know one day I had uh, put on some shorts and put on some, some sandals, and I was going out, and my children asked me, Daddy, why do you have on those old people's sandals? But well, watch this. Old eyes don't recognize old sandals. Old eyes only see sandals that they always wore. But a new generation has to come to you and say, hey, those are out of style or people are not doing that anymore. You know, and so sometimes God I need to put myself around some Joshua's. And if all I hang around is Moses's, and watch this, Moses has wisdom, but Moses is old. Moses has wisdom, but Moses is not going into the promised land. And to get where we are going, we have to make sure, wow, that we are always bringing new blood into the church, always bringing young people into the church. Every ministry has to have the idea, where are my young deacons? Where are my young ministers? Where are my young ushers? Where are my young choir members? Because if there are no replacements, we are in trouble. Now, I should be a mentor, but I should also have a mentee. Now, who is your Moses and who is your Joshua? Joshua represents the next generation, the new generation. What we do know is a generation is 20 years old. You know, I graduated from college in 1989. I graduated from high school in 1985. And for the longest time, I was young. And now I'm getting close to So I'm not young like I used to be. My daughter got married two years ago, and I walked her down the aisle, and she wasn't a baby when she got married. I'm not young like I used to be, and I need to be able to pass this thing on. When Bishop Brooks hired me um, as the director of Christian education, and the director of adult ministries, you know, uh, assistant pastor, when he hired me, I was young. I was on fire. I was boldly proclaiming. But if I told the truth over time, you lose a little bit of your fire. You lose a little bit of your passion. You lose a little bit of your zeal because you get so caught up in the things that's going on around you. You have responsibility. You have a house. You have a church. You have all these things going on. But young people are unencumbered. 
If God tells them, I want you to pick up and move to California, they're gone. If God tells them, I want you to go to Michigan, they're gone. But because we are so trapped, and sometimes Moses doesn't even recognize the traps, it's time for something new. It's time for a new generation. Isaiah 43, 19 says, behold, I will do a new thing and it shall spring forth. It will jump forth. It will bounce or I believe that God is doing a Joshua thing. I believe that God is doing a Joshua thing. And you know what? When I'm looking for staff people, and of course, you don't supposed to say stuff like this because people call this pretty much illegal. But when I'm looking for full-time staff people, I'm looking for young people. If they're my age, I'm not even looking at them. I'm telling you that. I'm not even looking at them. I'm not even looking at them. Is that right? Listen to me. If the Calvary is going to go forth in the future, I can't take a Moses to bring us into the future. I have to take a Joshua. And a Joshua can take me where I need to be. So it's time for a new generation. It's time for new ideas. It's time for God to do something great. Numbers, the 32nd chapter, verse 11 through 12 says, and everyone that was 20 years old and above, they didn't get to enter the promised land. And what is it about us old people? What is it about Moses that you can't teach us new tricks? You know, people say you can't teach a dog, an old dog, new tricks. Especially when that old dog doesn't want to learn. I believe that learning is a lifelong process. I think it's difficult to take older generations into new eras because older generations hold on, cling to, love what was. But what we have to learn how to do is stop loving what was and love what is. Stop loving what was and love what is. And I know sometimes one of the young ladies at our church, she told me, well, pastor, I just loved how Cabra used to be when we were uh, when we were in, on Jefferson Road and everybody knew each other and we always went out to eat and we were always together. And I have to constantly remind her that that is who we were. That is not who we are. And we are not living in the past. We are living in the present. Yeah, it's great to celebrate homecoming. It's great. We're getting ready to have our holy convocation, which celebrates our 22 years of existence. But I can't concentrate on what Calvary was. I've got to concentrate on what Calvary is. I can't think about all those members that were with us back then. I need to concentrate on the people that are with us now. I believe that God is a right now God. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verse one says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And if Dr. Fred Fred G. Casey Price were still alive, Fred would say, if it's not now, it's not faith. If it's not now, it's not faith. Y'all, it's time for a new generation. It's time for a transition. It's time for a new generation of mentors. It's time for a new generation of mentees. It's time for a new generation. It's time for a transition. I know I recently um, was out looking for a youth pastor, a youth director, and I had put all these applications out or made all these solicitations for people and honestly, I didn't find anyone. And then one day I was at the gym and I encountered a young man that had a passion for God. He was talking about God. He lived right. He spoke right. He talked right. Wasn't a preacher at all. And I felt the Lord leading me to ask him, hey, will you be our youth director or our youth facilitator? And initially, he said no. And I kept talking to him and talking to him and talking to him. And do you know that young man right now is the youth director? He's the person that's facilitating and doing a great job. And you know what? Sometimes you have to raise people up. Because people don't even know that they are the person that God has chosen. And sometimes Moses can see the Joshua that God wants to use. And sometimes Joshua doesn't even recognize it himself. Now think about this. After the devastating death of Moses, God has somebody in place by the name of Joshua. 
Moses is now dead. Joshua is now the new leader, the new pastor. He pastors two million people. Now, can you imagine pastoring two million people? My God, pastoring 20 people is a whole lot of work. Pastoring 200 people is crazy. Pastoring 2,000 people is very difficult. But now Joshua is the leader of 2 million people. He has this brand new job. And what we do know is that Joshua can't concentrate on what he lost. And we can't concentrate on what we lost. We've got to concentrate on what is. We can't concentrate on why we lost it, where we lost it. We've got to concentrate on where we are. I must be ready for transition. And transition will come whether you want it to or not. And so what is your Jordan that you are not crossing right now? What's stopping you from going across your Jordan? Is it because you don't have the right leader? Look at this. We must cross our own personal Jordans. In 23, will I finally be free? That's the question I've got to ask myself. In the year 2023, will I finally be free? Am I going across my Jordan River? And the Bible says in verse three, every place where the sole of your foot will tread, Joshua, upon I have given you. As I said to Moses from the wilderness and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the Euphrates and all the land of the Hittites and the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. And God says this, and no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. God says, I'm not going to leave you nor forsake you. And so what God tells this man of God is to get ready to walk into your promised land. And he says, if you touch it, you can take it. If you touch it, you can take it. Wherever your foot touches, you can take it. You know what Joshua had? Joshua had divine favor. And I believe that this new generation has divine favor. This new generation has divine favor. Sometimes when I'm listening to my son or listening to these young people preach, there was a, a little while ago, we had something at our church called Tabernacle Worship. And it was a whole lot of young people that came to lead worship for the whole congregation. And I'm just looking at them because young people have fire that we don't have. They have passion that we don't have. And you will say, well, where are those people? I want you to know that young people do love Jesus and they do praise God and they do lift up the name of Jesus. And I want you to know when we leave, when this old building keeps on leaning and we have to move to a better home, there's somebody that's coming behind us that's going to do greater things than we've ever done ever done. I look at Pastor Lockett, a great man of God, a great mentor of mine, but when he died, his son, Otis Lockett Jr., is over there tearing things up. He's building the kingdom. He's assaulting the devil. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violence take it by force. I am so godly proud of what he is doing. Not only is Otis Lockett Jr. doing it, Otis Lockett, Joshua Lockett is doing it too because they raised up seed. Otis Lockett and Barbara Lockett raised something to pass to the next generation. And you know what? We didn't know Pastor Lockett was going to die, but God did. And God knew that when he transitioned, he had to have somebody to replace him. Joshua has a promise of divine power. He has a promise of divine favor. And then the Bible says in verse six, be strong and of good courage for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance, the land which I swore unto their fathers to give them. Only be strong, Joshua, and very courageous that you mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. God tells this young man, be strong. He says, this generation needs to be strong. He tells this young man, be courageous. This generation needs to be courageous. He tells this young man, Be obedient. This generation needs to be obedient. And he said, be focused. 
and this generation needs to be focused. In other words, God tells Joshua, get ready to lead. Don't let people lead you. You lead the people. Don't let people lead you. You lead the people. The youth director that I referenced, when he first came in, he was trying to be democratic. He was trying to see what everybody thought. What do you think about this? What do you think about this? And I looked at him one day as a Moses speaking to a Joshua, and I said, Joshua, that's not the way you lead people. A pastor does not lead from behind. They lead from the front. And when you sit around all the time trying to ask people what they think, it's going to turn into a mess. And you know what? A little while later, he said, Pastor, you know what? You told me, right, I need to stop doing this because all it's doing is creating confusion. You know what he learned he needed to do? He needed to accept his mantle of leadership. He needed to accept his mantle of leadership. But guess what? When you become Joshua, everybody's not going to like you. Everybody's not going to listen. As a matter of fact, some people are going to have a major conflict with you. But don't let people lead you. You lead the people. In verse 8, as we get ready to wrap up and get out of here, this is the most famous scripture probably in the book of Joshua or as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But this one, Joshua 1 and 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, Joshua. Don't let it get out of your mouth. Always speak the word of the Lord it says this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it. And the word meditate here it really is related to a cow because a cow has two stomachs and a cow will chew and spit it up and then it will chew it again and keep on eating. God says, keep on eating on my word. Psalms 119 11 says, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Keep on eating on the word. The Bible says, thou shalt meditate therein day and night thou shalt may that thou mayest do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. So God tells this young man, be strong. He tells this young man, be courageous. He tells this young man, be obedient. He tells this young man, be focused. And I believe this, if the new generation or the next generation needs anything, they need the word. Now, singing is fine, but we need the word. Dancing is fine, but we need the word. Matching outfits, lights are fine, y'all, but we need the word. Let's hide the word in our heart. God tells him to meditate, to read it with thoughtful intent. And so I believe this. If someone wants to be a Joshua, they also want to be a studier. Because you can't teach what you don't know. And you can't lead where you don't go. God says, get ready. Because prosperity is coming your way, Joshua. Success is coming your way. And I believe this, that this generation needs the word. I have four children and my four children need the word of God. But you know what? Not only do they need the word of God, but their mama and daddy need the word of God. Vincent Sherrill need the word of God. But not only does Vincent Sherrill need the word of God, my mama needs the word of God. Because watch this. The word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. We all need the word. And whatever generation you're in, we need the word. And verse 9 says this. And have I not commanded you? Be strong, Joshua, and of good courage. Joshua, and be not afraid, Joshua, neither be thou dismayed, Joshua, for the Lord thy God is with thee, Joshua, whithersoever, y'all, thou goest. You know, sometimes we don't believe that God is with us, but God told Joshua, the new generation, that I am with you. And I believe this, that not only is God with Joshua, I believe that God is with me. But I believe that not only is God with Joshua and God with me, I believe that God is with the next generation. God is not just with me. He's with 
us. Isn't that what Emmanuel means? God with us. He's with us. But not only is God with me, the Bible says in Psalms 56 and 9 that God is for me. He's for me. Psalms 56 and 9 says, and when I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. This I know. God is for me. God is for me no matter who is against me. Psalms 56 and 9 says, this I know. God is for me. Now, there are a whole lot of things that I don't know. There are a whole lot of things that I don't understand. I don't understand chemistry. I don't understand engineering. I don't understand trigonometry. But what I do understand is that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life, that I am a child of God, that I have been born again. I do understand that what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I understand that. I do understand what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me White as snow. No other fount I know. I understand that. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So this I know that God is for me. I believe that God is with this generation just like he was with my generation. I'm not the last generation that God loves. I am not the last generation that loves Jesus. I am not the last generation, just like God loved Moses, just like God was with Moses, God was with, he loved Joshua, and he was with Joshua. Moses was not perfect, and he loved God. Joshua won't be perfect, and he loves God. And what we need to do is actually tell people the truth about Moses, and tell people the truth about Joshua. You know what? God loves us. And maybe you're listening to me today and you believe that God was with grandma and granddaddy, but he's not the same God that wants to be with you. And maybe you believe that God was with mama and God was with daddy, but he won't be that same God with you. I want you to know, Joshua, you are the generation that God loves. You are the generation that God wants to move through and do mighty things things. So do I believe this is a Jesus generation? I absolutely believe it. Do I believe that God is raising up sons and daughters? Do I believe that they are prophesying and seeing visions? Do I believe that they are running with the vision? I believe that. I believe that. And you know, sometimes we believe that there are no people coming behind us, but I want you to know, there's a great cloud of witnesses that have gone on before us. And I believe there's a great cloud of witnesses that are coming behind us. Now, if you miss me from singing down here, y'all come on up to bright glory. I'll be singing up there. But guess what? When I make it to singing up there, somebody else will be down here to sing the songs of Zion. This old building keeps on leading. I got to move to a better home. Verse 10 says this, then Joshua commanded the office of the people saying, pass through the host and command the people saying, prepare ye victuals for within three days ye shall pass over this joy. He said, in three days, we're going to pass over this joy. We're going to cross the impossible river says we're going to pass over this Jordan to go possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. So if I could say anything in my closing, get ready to possess your land. Get ready to possess your miracle. If God did it for them, he will do it for you. If he did it then, he can do it now. The Bible says that God is the same yesterday with grandma, today with us, and tomorrow with our future seed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so what would I say? I would say prepare for your crossing. Prepare for your miracle. I would say this, if God has given it, you have to pursue it. So on your mark, get ready, set, walk into your miracle. If you have heard this virtual word, if you've received anything, you can tweet, you can share, you can say, 
Hey, bless God. Thank God for Ebenezer, you know, doing this revival. Thank God for Pastor and First Lady Woods. Thank God for there being a virtual community. Thank God that God loves everybody. He loved me when I was young and he loves me when I am old. You know what David said? David said, I've been young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. I've never seen it. Father, I pray that you would bless, Lord, this word. Your scripture says that your word will go out and accomplish that which you sent it to do. Thank you, Lord, for every person that heard this word, that received this word, and that will grow closer to you because of this word. Bless this man of God. Bless this woman of God. Bless this congregation for the work that they do in this community. Let your name always be praised. And even as David declared in Psalm 63, Lord, he said that I will continue to praise God. I will continue to magnify God. Mm. I will give him all the glory. And so today, God, we acknowledge you. Lord, we acknowledge that you are great and greatly to be praised. So from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, we bless your name. We magnify your name. We give you all the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Amen. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died.
See you.